What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys back again with another Unity Quick Tips video and this is going to be a video on snapping. Snapping is a very useful feature in Unity. It can help you with precise placement and orientation. The main features of snapping are unit snapping, surface snapping, look at rotation and vertex snapping. We're going to take a look at all of these in this video. So first of all we have unit snapping. Before we get into it you might want to pause this video and set up your scene to look like this. It's basically three cubes. Two of the cubes have been stretched out to look like planes. Or, or platforms and one of them is scaled to two on the x y and z axis now once you're done setting this up you can continue the video all right so i've moved my cube i set it on zero on x three on y and zero on z now if you want to move an object around you have the translate tool which lets you move on multiple axes or even single axes if you choose to do so now apart from the regular way of positioning objects you can also use unit snapping in which case you would snap to a certain increment let's try this out hold down control and click any one of these arrows I'm gonna click the red one which is the the x-axis and try and move it this side and pay attention to the x value over here which is going to change as you move the cube as you can see it's incrementing by one it, it works the same way for negative values as well and you can try that out with y as well and you can try it out with z as well now currently these are incrementing by one on each axis you can change these settings from snap settings click edit snap settings and then you have the settings over here which are actually controlling the increments so if we change this to say five that's a very high number but yeah let's go for it uh, and I've, I've set five on move x so y and z are still one now hold down control and try moving the cube it moves by five units notice the x value over here the same goes for y and z if I change this to let's say three and it's currently on three hold down control and try and move it on the y-axis it changes by three units the same goes for z as well you get the point I'm not gonna uh, demonstrate with z alright so this is unit snapping when it comes to using the translate tool if you want to scale you can use unit snapping in scaling as well either click on this button here or hit R on, on your keyboard to enable the scaling tool we can scale on individual axes we can also scale overall let's change this back to 2 on x 2 on y and 2 on z just so that the calculation makes more sense to you currently the scale value in snap settings is set to 0 0.1 if you hold down control and try and scale it on the x-axis as you can see it changed from 2 to 2.2 now you must be wondering why it is that it's 0 0.1 over here but the increment was by 0 0.2 now if you notice when you scale an object it's not just one side that expands it's both sides so what's happening here is 0 0.1 is being applied to this side and then to that side as well that's why it becomes 0 0.2 so if we change this to say 1 notice the x value here and then try holding control and scaling it on the x-axis it changes to 4 you do it more it changes to 6 and 8 and so on and the same principle works when you're scaling it down next let's take a look at rotation you can use unit snapping in rotation as well the regular rotate tool allows us to rotate on individual axes and also just do a free rotation but if you want then you can use unit snapping here and rotate by certain degrees so the rotation value in snap settings is set to 15. So let's try rotating this. I'm going to rotate it on the z-axis. First look at the z-axis here, then hold down control and rotate it backwards. As you can see, it's changing by 15 degrees. You can change this value, make it 45, and then try rotating. It changes by 45. Alright, uh, these buttons over here basically help us to snap the object to the grid without actually having to move it with the translate tool ourselves. Let's say we set the move x to 1 and uh, move y to 1 as well and move z to 1 as well. The position on the x axis is 0. If I set this to 0 0.3 and then I click x, it's going to snap to 0. 
Now let me explain what's happening over here. Unity uses a sort of round off principle in this case. Uh, if you don't understand how uh, rounding off numbers works, then just Google it. It's a really simple principle. You'll understand it. So in this case, when I set it to 0 0.2 and then click X, it basically rounds off the number and I get zero. On what basis it's rounding off depends upon what number you have set over here. If I set this to 0 0.7, it's going to round off to one. If I change the value of move X to 0 0.5 and at that point, if I change this value to 0 0.24 and click x it's going to round off to 0 but if i change this to 0 0.26 it's going to round off to 0 0.5 i hope this is not too confusing for you if if it is then just keep messing around with the values you'll get it eventually now what i just explained to you applies to the x axis y axis and z axis now you have individual snap buttons here and then you ha you also have snap all axes which is going to snap all of them at once based on the values that you have provided over here so given these values that we have provided let's see if any changes take place when i click snap all axes as you can see, it rounded off to zero on the x-axis. So that's it for unit snapping. Next, let's take a look at surface snapping. Now, before I go any further, you need to make sure that this control over here does not say pivot. If it does, click on it and change it to center. I'll explain later why. With the translate tool selected, hold down control shift and you'll see a change in the gizmo over here. Click anywhere in this square and then go close to any of the surfaces. As you can see, it snaps to the surface. This is called surface snapping. Let me explain what's happening over here. Don't confuse this with snapping to the mesh. It's not actually snapping to the mesh. It's snapping to the collider that is on this object. So if I disable this box collider that is on this plane and then try surface snapping, it doesn't work. If I re-enable the collider, then try surface snapping, it works. Let me show you how accurate it, it really is. All right, just so you understand that it's actually snapping to the collider, change the value on Y to, let's say, 4, and now try snapping. Oh, sorry, the value that you have to change is uh, for the box collider of the, of the plane, this flat surface right here, not for this cube. All right, so now try surface snapping. Now you can see there's a space. The reason is that the collider is actually higher. It's not exactly fitting that mesh. So by this you know that it's not snapping to the mesh, it's actually snapping to the collider. Now that I've changed the collider size again, if I now try surface snapping, it's going to snap exactly to the flat surface. All right, so let's bring this up a little bit. Now let me show you why I told you to change this from pivot to center. Now in order to get surface snapping to work, this needs to be set to center. If it is set to pivot, it's actually going to snap to the pivot. It's not going to snap to the surface. Watch what happens when I try surface snapping now. You see this? It's snapping to the pivot of the object, not to the surface. If I change this back, and then try surface snapping. Now it snaps to the surface. Now again, even with this, snapping is not going to work unless this object has a collider on it. So this is how surface snapping works. Next, let's take a look at look at rotation. Look at rotation is very useful in situations where you might want to make the object face another object or look at another object. When I say look at, I mean the local Z axis of that object is going to point towards whatever object you're making it look at. Let's try this out now. Select the rotate tool, click this or hit E and don't click on any of these axes. Click somewhere within this sphere, just not on any of these axes. Also hold down control shift and then point towards an object that has a collider or let's say point towards any point on a surface of an object that has a collider. So let's point towards this one. As you can see, the object is looking at this surface that we are pointing at. Now, as you can see, I haven't let go of the mouse uh, button yet, just so you know. I'm still trying to look at this object, but that's not working. The reason is the box collider is disabled. Just like surface snapping, even look at rotation only works when you have a collider enabled on that object. Now that I've enabled the collider, if I try pressing Control Shift and rotating this object, I can look at this surface, I can even look at this surface. Now just so you have proof that it's actually looking at that surface, I currently have local selected over here, so we, we are going to be looking at the local axes of the object. Go into translate mode 
and you'll see this blue arrow pointing towards the object. That basically means that this object's transform dot forward is pointing in that direction. So this is how you know that uh, your look at rotation is actually working. So that's it about look at rotation. Let's take a look at vertex snapping now. Before we go any further, change the rotation to zero on all axes and then make a duplicate of this cube. Select the cube in the hierarchy and hit control D and a cube will be created in the same position. Vertex snapping is a really simple but powerful tool in Unity. It lets you take any vertex from a given mesh and place it in the same position as a vertex from another mesh. Uh, before we proceed. Let me show you exactly what the vertices are. Have your cube selected and see here where it says shaded. Just select that and go into wireframe mode. This will help us see the mesh better. These points over here that make up this triangle, these are vertices. Each vertex makes up one point of the triangle. Now vertex snapping basically lets us snap one vertex from one mesh to the vertex on another mesh. Let's see what this looks like. Go back to shade it and have this cube selected and hit shift V. This enables vertex snapping mode. So at this point you can leave your keyboard and if you move your mouse around this object you're gonna see it snapping to the vertices automatically. So these are your options basically. These are the vertices that you can snap to vertices on other meshes. Let's try this out now. Click this vertex here and move towards this cube. You'll notice the moment you move your mouse it automatically snaps. It snaps to the closest point. So you can snap to this point, you can snap to this point, this point, even here. It, it depends upon which uh, which point you have selected. So if I have this point selected, for example, it's going to snap to whatever point is possible. This is basically vertex snapping. Now, the reason why this is very useful is because you cannot see any gaps between these two cubes over here. As you can see, the, the vertex snapping mode is enabled right now. So to disable this, just press V and it's disabled. And now currently we have this cube selected so you know that there is a, a division between the two. They're not one object. But if I don't have it selected, you can't tell the difference. It looks like one big cube. This is why vertex snapping is such a useful tool. Say we make duplicates of these two cubes and go into vertex snapping mode and try and snap this vertex to this vertex. Let's say we made a duplicate of these two cubes and brought it far. And now we want to snap it. Let's say we want to snap this vertex right here to this point. Enable vertex snapping mode and select this vertex and go close to this. Now you don't have to enable vertex snapping mode each time you want to do vertex snapping. You can just hold down V, which temporarily enables it, and then place the object wherever you want to place it. Once you're done, just leave the mouse button and leave V and you're done. Now, unlike surface snapping and look at rotation, vertex snapping does not require colliders. So let's say I disable the colliders on these two objects, select both of them and just disable the box collider. And then if I try snapping, it still works. I'm able to snap to that object and to other objects that actually do have colliders as well. So yeah, this is how snapping works. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you would like to watch more tutorials, you can click in the top left corner of the screen and in the top right is a link to my music channel where I post music that I make in my free time. In the bottom left corner, you have a preview for a small game that I made. The links for the project and the game build are in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.